Picture this. You need to do some soldering, and all you have is an old iron with a short cord that plugs into the wall. But where you need to do the work can't be anywhere near a wall, like a car stereo. What do you do? Well, if you're the founder of a right to repair company, you drag an extension cord out to the car and then set to work on designing a better soldering iron. This is the iFixit Fix Hub. And you know what? It completely changed my opinion on soldering. You should know a few things about this Fix Hub solution up front. It comes in two pieces, a smart soldering iron, which you can buy by itself for $80, and a portable power station, which you can buy with the soldering iron for a total of $250. The soldering iron uses a USB-C connection, and it has some handy smart features that are great for both beginners and veterans in the soldering world. First up is this light ring right here. It's basically a safety and warning light. When it's blue, the tip is cool and safe to the touch. When it's purple, it's either heating up or cooling down, so don't touch the tip. And when it's orange, it's at the user set temperature, so again, don't touch the tip. Now I know, don't touch a hot soldering iron tip seems like basic advice, but it's always good to know if the tip is in fact hot without the more analog test of hold my hand real close to try and feel heat without accidentally touching it. And sometimes you do want to touch the tip after all, to change it. This iron comes with a bevel 1.5 tip, and iFixit plans to offer six more tip options in various bevel, cone, and knife sizes. It uses a quick chain system so you can easily switch tips. Now, when it comes to the default tip that comes to the iron, I think what they sent is the right choice for a default. Bevel tips are useful for plenty of applications, but you'll probably want to pick up a knife edge for more delicate work. And I don't yet know how much they'll cost, and you have to go with iFixit's solution. And if you want something other than the four shapes that iFixit plans to offer, well, that may never happen, so keep that in mind. Another great feature comes in the form of an accelerometer. Put the soldering iron down for 30 seconds or, and it will reduce the temperature. After another 30 seconds, it'll turn off entirely. And if you drop it, that will turn it off too. Now that might sound annoying, the concept of your tip cooling down anytime you're setting the next piece in place for soldering, but it's actually not, because this soldering iron tip can get up to temperature in less than four seconds. By the time you pick up the iron and position it where you want, it'll be heated and ready to go. This is a 100 watt soldering iron, which allows it to get up to temperature fast and maintain that heat. One thing I do love about this iron is the ergonomics. I've pulled multi-hour sessions with the iron working on various projects and my hand never tired or cramped throughout the process. It felt like an extension of me. If you just buy the iron alone, it comes set to heat up to 350 degrees Celsius or 660 Fahrenheit out of the box. And thanks to that USB-C connection, you can change that by connecting it to your computer. You can theoretically use any old USB-C cord, but you'll want to use the one that comes with it, partly because that helps with the soldering station and partly because it has a nice locking mechanism so the cord doesn't accidentally pull out. And naturally, you have an on-off switch on the iron as well. I also like this heat-resistant cap because it magnetically attaches with a satisfying thunk. And you have the perfect place to set your iron down when you want to seat things or move on to the next step. The only downside is that sometimes you'll thunk the tip against this magnet right here instead of inside the cap. But that brings up the power station itself, because while you can buy this smart soldering iron alone, I think it's worth buying the soldering station too. Hey, you know what else is worth doing? Hitting that subscribe button. We have a lot of other reviews and tech news coming, including Apple's new iPhone 16 Pro. And while I have this, I'm gonna try and fix my wife's old Sega Game Gear. I may fail at it entirely because it might be beyond my skills and I'll post the video either way. So subscribe if you want to see that happen. This station is at heart a giant battery and that's the beauty of this Fix Hub station solution. With this little guy, you're no longer tethered to a wall. You can take your soldering iron anywhere it's safe to work and get that work done. 
It's a 55 watt hour battery, which iFixit says is enough to get you through eight hours of soldering. I haven't pulled any eight hour sessions yet, but I can tell you the battery outlasts me. I quit one night after a few hours of soldering and the battery was still at 80%. I just didn't have the drive to keep going and my back was starting to ache. Not my hands, my back. You'll find three USB-C ports on this station. The single port in the rear is a 45 watt spot for charging the battery. And the front two ports are capable of a combined 100 watts of power delivery output. Why two? So you can actually plug in two soldering irons at once. With a click of this button, you can switch between the two irons, which is handy if you wanna switch between tips. In addition to switching between ports, this switch serves as an on off button and a menu interface. And this dial lets you scroll through the menus and adjust the temperature of the iron. And of course, there's a handy little display to give you the current temperature and other messages, like a warning if you dropped the iron and it turned off the unit. You'll also find a handy kickstand and two mounting points for that magnetic cap. You can buy iron stands separately, but you won't need that with this one. It all works together. And I just want to repeat that, especially on this stand, the cap is so satisfying to use. iFixit says you can fully recharge the battery in two hours with a 65 watt charger. The best I have is a 45 watt and it got to 97% in about three and a half hours, which tracks with that promise. It didn't want to go above 97% though, which I assume is a battery protection feature. And since this is an iFixit device, you can repair it. Namely, with a few screws, you can take the station apart and replace the battery. The battery is usually the first thing to go bad in most electronics, so that's really great to see. You can easily spend less on a soldering iron. I certainly did, but what you'll get won't be as well-made, comfortable, or versatile, and you probably won't have the long-term support that a right-to-repair focus company like iFixit will provide. This isn't perfect. I mean, I feel the need to point something out. My much cheaper kit came with the whole host of tips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tips right out of the box that I can switch out. And in a few shapes that currently iFixit hasn't guaranteed they'll offer. In my time with this soldering iron, I found a lot to love. It's fairly beginner friendly, but naturally soldering is something you have to practice to do well. With this kit, you'll actually want to practice at it. I've soldered here and there, but never really enjoyed it. And it's been a while. So my skills were rusty and you can see that in some of my shots, but I was having fun. It worked that well, felt that comfortable. So whether you're an old hand at soldering or just thinking about picking it up as a hobby, I have the same recommendation. Buy this one, preferably with the full station if you can afford it. It's probably the best most versatile soldering iron you can buy from a company you can easily contact if you do have problems. That's it for now, but don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, bye.